Hello, and welcome to another Big Finish review. In this Big Finish review, I'll be looking at the Mega, the only third Doctor Lost story. So this is quite an exciting release for me, um, as me being a huge Pertwee fan, so it's very exciting uh, to see, you know, a untold Pertwee story and adapted by Big Finish, because Big Finish is just fantastic, so it's got to be a good release. So in this review, we're going to find out my thoughts on this and do my usual procedure. Um, but first of all, I've had a fair few requests, and some people have been waiting since like the end of January, I think. Um, and I'm really sorry, but I haven't got round to um, reviewing them. I've just been busy with other things, and other things have uh, just taken shape, um, which is only natural, I suppose. So the requests are going to be happening very soon um, in the near future. Uh, I've got Minuet in Hell and uh, The Crooked Man. Um, and uh, Unit Dominion, uh, that sort of stuff. So I'll probably do like requests, um, those requests um, later on um, in the year. Well, possibly it'll be it'll be beginning of April. Um, I think the requests will be all done. Um, also, big Finnish fans, um, Dark Eyes overview will be uh, the this Saturday coming uh, the 28th of March. I think um, that's the date. Yeah, I think it is. Um, I may be wrong, but um, yeah, we'll be covering Dark Eyes and looking at uh, the range as a whole and rating, you know, from what's our favourite Dark Eyes to our least favourite. I think most people know what my least favourite Dark Eyes is. Uh, but anyway, let's look at uh, the Mega. So for the cover of the Mega, we have the Doc 2 logo there, R Katie Manning and Richard Franklin perform the Mega. Then we have the writers there, then we have the John Pertwee Iden there, which I really think they should use for the third Doctor Early Adventure box, which I've... Uh, heard a little teaser for and it just sounds incredible um, but I'll go into that more detail when it comes out then we have Joe the doctor uh, Captain Mike Yates who's a lovely man and I'm going to do a video about meeting him and the day of the doctors as well um, in the next couple of days that'll be up then we have two unit soldiers unit jeep fire uh, of a building what was destroyed but I'm not going to say then we have this swirl what uh, I'm not going to reveal the identity of that swirl then we have uh, this, uh, we jump out of there because it's in a big dual case there, 4.4, and it is the last lost story. Then we have what the story is about there, and then we have the cast members, and the total runtime is 180 minutes, so this is a six-parter. So that's uh, the cover. Okay, okay so here book. is the booklet, so if we open it up, we have production notes there, and we have other ad advertisements for the final series of lost stories there. Uh, with the Dark Planet, Lords of the Red Planet, uh, the Queen of Time and the Mega. And then we have advertisement for Doctor Who magazine, then we have credits, and we have a picture of the cast members there. And then we have the reversible cover, um, if you want to change the cover. Um, and here we have the disc art, which is the same on all three discs, apart from disc 2 and disc 1, saying like part 1, 2 and that sort of stuff. Now, so before go. I will go into my thoughts on this story, I thought I'd give a bit of background where this story would be placed in the Pertwee era. Now, this story would belong in Season 8 because there's a little reference to whether the Master would be behind it because in Season 8, the Master was in every story, um, which is quite interesting. And then there is a character very similar to the Master in this, and you can easily see Roger Delgado's Master fitting into that role um, brilliantly. Um, but at the beginning, uh, well, sort of in the first part, there is a moment where Jo um, gets a test tube out of her bag and passes it to the Doctor. And the Doctor says, oh, I'll make a lab assistant out of you just yet, suggesting that this is very early on in the Doctor and Jo's relationship, and Jo's still gaining the Doctor's trust, um, which makes me suggest that it is season eight. And I've done, a bit, I've done a bit more research, and I think people have said that it um, slots in between sort of uh, mind of evil to colony in space sort of uh, time period so that's where this story would have fitted in um, so there we go uh, now let's go into the actual review itself now the mega is a real lost gem from the Pertwee era this story having everything you could ever wish for from a Pertwee story from action 
to political matters. While I listened to the trailer for this release, it seemed a very Mind of Evil style story. And yes, it very much is a Mind of Evil style story, with it mixing the Claws of Axos and the Ambassadors of Death to create this story. Now the storyline about weapons of mass destruction and nerve gas is still present is still a present feature in today's society as it was back in 1970s which I think makes the story even more real and quite thought provoking and it does seem um, like it comes from the mindset of Barry Letts because Barry Letts was very much a person looking at matters what could affect uh, the future like the Green Death that was a sort of Barry Letts input about um, waste and all that sort of stuff by go global chemicals so I think this does seem very much a Barry Lett sort of uh, concept or idea. Performance wise Katie Manning does an excellent job um, with her impersonating uh, the, fun uh, the wonderful John Pertwee um, with Manning's doctor evoking the spirit um, of Pertwee with the occasional uh, very individual pronunciation of certain words and as for jo as for Joe, she still maintains um, uh, th that character's voice, which is fantastic. Now, Richard Franklin, he's quite interesting. He does a superb job as Yates, as you would expect, because that's the person he played. Um, but as for his Benton impression, it's a bit inconsistent. Sometimes it be it can be quite good, but other times it just falls apart and it's just a mess. Uh, but for his Brigadier impression, it starts off sort of, yeah, okay, but as the story progresses, it becomes more recognisable um, as the Brigadier, which is fantastic, um, because I think the reason why that is because the Brigadier is used more heavily um, in the later half of the story. Supporting cast members, um, there are only two, uh, Beau Parage, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, he played um, multiple characters, but the most notable one is Prince Cassier, um, who I think is a brilliant character and he's this suave character and really does work against this rather sophisticated uh, third Doctor which is fantastic and it's nice to see those two um, sort of powerful figures clash. Uh, now the other character, well the other person, the other cast member, Derek Carlyle does a fantastic job as uh, the Mega. Now the Mega themselves um, are, really interest are a real interesting foe and are a really good concept and they are sort of a bit like the axons, that's where the Claws of Axos uh, bit comes into it. Uh, but I do feel that um, they're rather generic, they are sort of um, henchmen, um, as it were, but they're meant to be this sort of, the brains behind all this operation, but all I get from them is they're sort of this real terrifying henchmen. Um, and I can see why they couldn't produce this story, because A, the, the Mega are this sort of swirling sort of... Um, life form and quite giant and like electricity sort of monster foe thing um, and also this is quite a action packed story and this would mean um, them going abroad to film this and I don't think they could afford that and having a biplane and all that sort of stuff in it so I can see why this story wasn't produced um, but it would have been wonderful now to I've see. said this is a wonderful story for the third doctor and this is a great story for the third doctor because we get to see the third doctor contained and we know you know, the Third Doctor doesn't like to be contained, he likes to be a free spirit, as it were. And in this, the Third Doctor is really tested in, you know, betraying units, betraying, you know, the friendship between the Brigadier and the Doctor, which is definitely an interesting concept and must have been quite... It must have been like Mike Yates um, going behind, you know, units back. It's one of those type of things, if it was made, it'd be quite a shocking thing. Um, and also... The Doctor's and Joe's relationship are literally on the rocks. It could go either way with Joe trying to do the right thing, bless her heart, you know, trying to stop all this, whereas the Doctor is just letting all this happen, all this destruction and death happening and all these threats and all these important things just happening. And it's definitely an interesting thing to see the third Doctor trying to cope um, with all this going around him and um, and of course you get the wonderful action bit with you know him on a biplane and you know vintage cars it's all wonderful you know explosions and this story does have a real sense of threat with you know the mega having you know can destroy um, you know buildings and stuff you know in the click of a button they can target anyone around the world and just have them assassinated 
it gets very dark, it's very political, and overall it's just fantastic, it's a thought-provoking story, and I'm going to have to say, it is my favourite Lost story, uh, the pacing's fantastic, the, ca the cast are just all-round brilliant, and you can tell they had a ball making this, especially on the behind-the-scenes, and I absolutely love it, um, not only because it's John Pertwee uh, for Doctor Story, but it's just an all-round fantastic sum up of the third Doctor era, gadgets, actions, uh, political scandal, um, and it, yes, <laughs> it's amazing, it's, it can get dark with, you know, Prime Ministers dying and all that, and it's such a high budget story, anyway I'm glad they didn't make it, but if they had the James Bond sort of uh, budget, I can easily be happy to sit down and watch this because it is just a super a superb work um, and is a real gem and uh, just a, such a shame that it wasn't made for the third Doctor era. But I've babbled enough about this because it's such a fantastic story. I suppose I've got to rate it now. Uh, I'm going to rate it a well-deserved 10 Bessies out of 10. That's a rarity. 10. Yes, yeah, so thank you very much for watching this review. Join me in my next review, whatever that will be. Probably be Equilibrium um, and then the Entropy Plague, which will be interesting. So thank you very much for watching this review and goodbye.